Okay, I'm on a streak today. I thought of another fly to show you. Um, this is one from back in the day called a uh, an AP nymph, uh, all-purpose nymph, and uh, invented by a guy named Andre Puyens, um, who was one of the greatest tires who ever lived. So um, this is a cool fly. It's a simple fly. You know, as I uh, tie more and more of these kind of old school uh, retro flies, which I hate to say are from when I was a kid, because now I'm old school. Um, it impresses me how compared to today's flies how simple they were um, and it's uh, that tells you something um, so what I'm going to do here is I've got a, a Tiemco 3761 this is a size 16 um, and this is a mayfly nymph so um, you can tie this to match you know it's an all-purpose nymph AP nymph um, you can tie this to match any variety of, uh, of mayfly nymphs I'm going to tie your gray one which might uh, uh, match up for a, a, a Calabatus nymph in a lake, um, any any variety of, of different bugs. Um, and I'm going to start with some 14 knot gray thread. And I'm going to wrap a thread base all the way back to the bit. Um, so for the tail on this, I used to tie these for shops back in the day. Um, and originally, you took a, a clump of, of moose and generally tied this in, in bigger sizes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little clump of moose hair um, and I've got, you know, probably eight or ten, eight or ten hairs here. And I'm going to spin my thread up and make just a little nub here at the bend. And that's going to help me to flare this tail. So when I lay this hair in, I'll kind of check the length. I want it maybe just a little bit more than then a half a shank, and I'll kind of flare that tail out, almost like a dry fly tail, like so. And then I'm going to wrap forward over those butt ends up to about the 75% point. Now what I like to do is kind of split these tails out a bit and trim some of the hair out of the center. Um, I'm going to try to do this where you can see it, but I'm going to come in and just trim those center hairs out. Boy, I'm getting... That's a bad angle for me. I'm afraid I'm going to cut everything off. Tried to show you. Okay, let's hope I didn't have too much coffee. There we go. Trim one more of those out. So that I've got a little split tail that's multi-fibers built out of that, that moose hair. And then I can kind of Pull those tip ends down and clean those butt ends up a little bit if I need to. Like so. So then I'm going to tie in a piece of fine or extra fine copper wire. And I'm going to leave those butt ends of that moose. That's going to become our wing case and legs here in a minute. So I'm going to tie that piece of wire in. And then I'll take some muskrat dubbing. Um, this is just muskrat fur. And I'm going to dub the abdomen. And you can see the butt ends of that, that moose hair um, sort of build a fair amount of bulk on the hook. So we don't need to build a whole lot with this dubbing. We're just really going to try to shape and color and get the texture there. So I'm going to twist that down tightly. Um, and again, if you haven't worked with natural fur dubbings, uh, very often there's there's some guard hairs in there that you've got to kind of learn to work around. Um, if you end up with one sticking out, it's not the end of the world. It makes the fly a little buggier. But now I'm going to build the abdomen. And I'm going to taper this abdomen up toward the front here. Like so. And I'll pull off that extra dubbing. And I'll come through and I'll rib my wire through. So just nice evenly spaced turns through that abdomen and I'll tie that off with a couple turns. Now my camera battery is going to die so we're going to pause for one second. I'll be right back. All right we've got a fresh battery in the camera now so we can continue. Uh, so I've got that wire tied off. I'm going to make sure I've got that cinch down then I can just break that out of there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these butt ends of this moose hair to form the wing case. So I'm going to come forward about half that distance of the of the thorax and I'm going to fold these ends back again and wrap back over them. And I want to come back and you can see you can kind of put one turn right behind the other. I want to come come back 
to just over the front edge of the abdomen there. So about a 60-40 split. Then I'll come in and take a little bit more dubbing, and this is what we're going to build our thorax with. So I'll jump my thread forward a bit here. And it's not going to take as much dubbing as you think because that uh, that bulk is already built in there from doubling that, that moose hair over. So I'm going to dub this down nice and tight. And anytime I've got a hill like this to, to dub around, I like to start at the front. But I want to leave myself about an index point, about an eye length worth of bare space up there behind the hook eye. Then I'll dub right up to the start of the abdomen, right at the base of that wing case. And then I'll kind of square that wing case off a bit. And as I run out, I want to end up right behind the hook eye. Uh, you can see I've got a few guard hairs here. Sometimes you can just pull those out. Sometimes you got to trim them out. Um, and really, it probably didn't make any big difference if you leave them there. So now what I'll do, I want to make sure I have a thread base down. I'm going to pull this moose forward and kind of spread it. Let me get a hold of this, and I'll turn the fly so you can see it. Spread it across the top for the wing case. So I'm going to pull that taut. I'm going to tie it down with a couple turns behind the eye there. And then for the legs, I'm just going to take just a couple of these back on each side, just like you would a pheasant tail, and pinch those legs back with a couple turns. I usually pick the longest ones. Yep. There we go. For the legs. And then I'll come in and trim the rest out. So I want to get in there with my fine tip scissors, cut those as close as I can. Um, now here's a this is sort of an old school fly thing that a lot of guys did back in the day, and John Barr still does on some of his stuff, is we're going to dub that head. Um, so we're going to take just a tiny little pinch of dubbing here. And put that on really tight. And we're going to use this to cover that thread work. And you can see you can kind of position those legs in place and run out right behind the hook eye. Then I'll come in and whip finish the thread. Trim those legs just a touch longer than the wing case. Perk that tail up a little bit. And there's our finished AP nymph. We've got a couple crazy guard hairs there that I don't that I don't love, but we'll get rid of those. But that's our, our finished AP nymph. Um, and one of the cool things about this fly is because it's got that moose hair wing case, um, you can grease this up and fish it as a floating nymph. Um, and, and that's something that, uh, gosh, not many people know about these days. It's been around for a long time. But um, if you take this fly and, and put floating on it and fish it behind a dry, you can fish it right in the surface film. And uh, uh, fish will almost always eat that. It's really hard to see. And uh, you know holds true to the old adage that anytime the fishing gets tough, the fish want a fly that is harder for you to see. So by that I mean either smaller, darker, or lower floating. Um, so a small, dark, low floating AP nymph like this, uh, fish behind a dry, um, is is a pretty effective way to go about things. But um, cool little fly, kind of old school, um, easy to tie. You can do it. You can tie it, obviously. You can tie this in a million different colors. Um, but that's a cool one. I'm glad I remembered that one. Dug that out of the out of the archives there in my brain. Glad something was working today. Um, but I hope you enjoy that one. Twist up some AP nymphs and uh, uh, hope, hope you uh, catch some fish on it. I know I have over the years. I'm going to put some more of these in my box right now. So take care. Thanks for watching. We'll be back soon.